It's our top three great movies that we never want to see again. This is Talk Talk Punch. Thank you so much to both our audio podcast listeners and our YouTube viewers for joining us. I am Brody, and I'm joined as always by Tudong Dylan. Hey. And the man of a thousand nicknames, Charlie Hickman. How's it going? All right. If you haven't already, we would love it if you checked out our Patreon page in the description below. Help us support what we do. And if you would like, we would love it if you would like to like, like the like and the like like and hit the like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. So that way you can come back here every Wednesday and hang out with us. Sorry, I'm still on some pain meds from a shoulder surgery. So (laughs) it's all right. We're we're getting there. All right, yes. Brody, for what it's worth, I like like you. Oh, thank you. Mm. So yeah, great movies. Maybe we walk out of the theater and we're like, you know what? That was really well done. I don't ever want to see it again. That's kind of how I approach this. How about you guys? How do you feel about this list? Definitely. It's difficult. It was, it was, it was, tr- it was tricky. I, I, it was difficult? I, I employed, uh, you know me, I like to do, a, I have a scientific methodology that I like to go through. He does. So, so I had a three-step process. Number one, I had to still think it was great. Not a movie that I saw once and thought was great once, but now someone's like, hey, is this a good movie? And I'm like, eh. <laughs> I have to sure. say unequivocally, yes, it's a, it's a, it's a really well done movie. Uh, and it has to you know, be something that I don't want to watch more. So I, I have more methodology that I'll explain when it's, I don't want to give too much away here. But, ah. but yes, that's a, that's my, that was where I started. Let's what about you, bro? Oh, well, like I said, if I, if I walked out of the theater and I was like, that was really well made. Or I, or I finished streaming it or whatever, and I was like, that was really well done, but I don't ever need to see that. That's kind of how I was. And I thought this was kind of easy. I had, like, multiple others that I considered. Maybe well, just having more that you like consider this. is part of what makes it hard, bro. True. Mm, Very true. That's true. It's not... not I almost mm. never mean it's hard because I couldn't think of things to put in. It's almost always... Deciding oh. which one. To no, put for it. for me, it's a hard list if I'm coming up with the three. It's an easy list if I can come up with like six, and then I just have to narrow it down. Ah, that's. But if I'm like, that's good. That's, that's why the TV ones are always three. hard for you because you're like, hmm, I've only <laughs> seen three TV shows. Oh, TV which show one? Okay, that's true. Well, Never ever. We are gonna start out. The order is gonna be me, and then Charlie. So oh. me. Every time I bring it home. It's got to be a good one for your number one. All right. So, yeah. so Better surprise us. Yeah, It'll be a surprise. If, if it's the time I, I want to be shocked. From Phantasm. Hey, I can watch Phantasm anytime. Anytime I can watch it. I would be day, shocked to hear you say that. <laughs> really? <laughs> if you, to, say, to say if you never wanted to watch it, it, it again. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You'd be right. right. So my number three is a movie that I saw in college. Uh, That probably gives it away because I talk about this. I've got a soft spot for Stanley Kubrick. And so this one was just, I finished it and I was like, don't ever need to see that one again. And that's Lolita. (laughs) You know, it's, it's not often that I sit down and I'm like, you know what I want to watch a movie about a middle-aged man and a teenage girl running away together. Or somebody yeah. comes over, I have friends over, I'm like, hey, you guys want to watch this Lolita movie? Um, no, you're was, like, let's watch Event Horizon. <laughs> I'd rather watch Event Horizon with people than Lolita, trust me. It's a, it's a more romantic film, the Event Horizon, for sure. Very true, very true. So, you know, I, I it was it was one of those, it was kind of an uncomfortable watch the whole time, but it's well done. And that's the thing, is that I think that it's, and I'm counting the Stanley Kubrick, not the remake that had uh, Jeremy Irons in it, the, the original one. You know, made the, it? Uh, you, were, you, were, you hate Jeremy Irons? No, I love Jeremy Irons. He's the best bat. He's the best Alfred. There you go. Um, but no, I, I'm talking about the, this one. The, the remake had some really uncomfortable scenes that really made me uncomfortable and kind of took it in like a... <laughs> I, I don't like watching this, but this one, you know, wasn't as, uh, I don't know. 
wasn't it was hey, Stanley Kubrick. He he delivers. He delivers. Yeah, yeah. You know, there it, it, it was implying that there was kind of this relationship between this man and this teenager without showing. Um, and so so yeah, it was it was well made, but it's it's kind of one of those like. I cannot think of a circumstance where I would really be in the mood to watch this. So there's, and I think the only reason you watched it before was because it was for a class, right? It's for a class. Yeah. Yeah. It was How, a was class. Peter Sellers? Had... How was Peter Sellers? Huh? How was Peter Sellers? It was good. I haven't seen this movie. I have. Oh. This is the movie that I'm like, I have zero desire to see. And I love Stanley Kubrick <laughs> and, and Peter Sellers. Yeah, I mean, Peter Sellers is great, you know, um, he's in a bunch of stupid Kubrick stuff. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's, what, what's that face for, too long? I saw that. Oh, that? Well, how was he in Lolita? Was he like, he wasn't the guy, was he? Was no, he the older I, guy? I, no, James, huh, James no, Mason James was Mason the professor. James Mason is, is uh, Humbert, Humbert, Humbert. Um, Peter Sellers, I think, is the, the uh, guy that then she leaves james mason for and then goes off it's it's kind of a messed up story um but yeah it's Good. okay hey. so i'll take well, your word for it i got well it. made it's kubrick it's done well if you want to watch it go for it i don't ever want to watch it again so there is my number trace charlie what's your number three so uh, I hinted that I, I had some further uh, kind of like thought process on how I did my movies. So I do like I'm, I didn't cheat. I'm not I'm not just putting like a category up there, but I did also kind of imagine that each of these movies that I selected represents a larger or broader category or type of movie that I typically don't want to revisit, if that makes sense. So this number three, and you can put my my poster up is unequivocally, I think, a, a very good movie. It is very well done. Um, I, you know, it's, it's a very dark and serious movie. So I went ahead and, uh, I, I did choose some, uh, some lighter hearted gif, uh, gifts, excuse me, excuse me, uh, as my, uh, as my, uh, you know, to kind of lighten the mood here and, and uh, much needed when you're watching, uh, you know, these, uh, war movies, which are usually like the big ones, um, yeah. tend to be like pretty epic in scope and brutal and just kind of like tough tough watches sure. when you go through the first time and for me personally just not something that i have found in my life that i'm like oh i can't wait to pop that in again especially as i've gotten older and time to just kind of watch movies has shrunk uh and like you know if i if i manage to have a saving private ryan's worth of time to watch a movie that is yeah. just not like hey, what do i want to watch on this like I, the family's out, out doing something on a saturday let me let me see a bunch of guys just get absolutely eviscerated in like the most brutal conditions possible i i like war genres i know it's a, it's a popular movie genre and like dunkirk recently i know you guys love that um but for me like it's, it's something that as a spectacle maybe i'll i'll watch one or two here or there uh for the first time just to kind of see some of the what the, what the fuss is about uh on a new on a new film or whatever but after that i'm good tucking it away and saying nice to nice to have known you sir there's a pie in your face <laughs> that's pretty funny <laughs> that's the one like, the, the sniper one's pretty great <laughs> yeah. barry pepper yeah. man i this i barry, barry pepper was, was good in this uh good he should have been a bigger a bigger star barry pepper mm -hmm. Uh, he's great in 61 but that i will rewatch. Well, it's I... a baseball movie so. yeah <laughs> hey, that's endless rewatchability on those come on now <laughs> no, this all is right dylan what's your number three my number three and i gotta say i had been i had been trying to choose different things like i was gonna choose saving private ryan but i was like bah! Sometimes I'll, I'll like see like different parts of it and there's bits of levity and all that kind of thing. I almost chose Saving Private Ryan for my number three, but instead I chose Schindler's List. Uh, when I went to go see this with my dad and my brother, my dad was like, we have to watch this when it came out. And I was like, we don't have to watch this. You know? And my brother, he was the same. He was like, we don't you know, we don't, we can read about this kind of thing. He's like, no, this is coming out, and it has to do with, like, Ancestors 3 and all that kind of thing, so we, we, we have to watch it. And we did watch it, and I was just like, I'll be honest, 
I thought it was going to be a lot more brutal than it was. It was very brutal, and I don't ever want to watch it again, even though it was a very well-made movie. It was shockingly well-made. So shockingly well-made that I actually don't even... I, I kind of put it out of my mind. I really kind of put it out of my mind. I, I got a lot of different kinds of lessons from it, and I was like, you know, it's really good to be compassions people there's a lot of different lessons but the point is i've seen schindler's list once i don't think i ever bought it with the desire to watch it again it is excellent and people should watch it people should watch it my dad was right and it, it, and uh, i mean you know yeah um so i'm not I'm, I'm glad that i watched it it was a very well-made movie Jeez, steven spielberg oh, uh, and all of the actors in it unbelievable do I want to watch it again? Do I want to remember all the different parts and scenes? No, I don't want to really <laughs> talk about it. Do you remember that one scene where the girl in the red kite? No, 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 no. It's fine. It happened. We, we watched it. It's not something to like that you should forget, but definitely not something I'm going to revisit. That is my number three. You always have to end with that kind of a sentence. This, this might be one of my favorite John Williams scores. As, mm. as, as the music is so freaking good. Um, so even if you if you don't feel like you can handle the movie, listen to the music and you just even within it, the sorrow melancholy is just ah, it's beautiful, haunting, haunting movie, haunting score. It's a good pick. I remember I bought this on DVD, and then I remember kind of looking at it and being like, I'm not sure why I. Bought this. I think it was just in those days where it was like, hey, anything under ten bucks, I'll buy. You know, like yeah. It's probably this still unopened. One I, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> and this one I could see I could see like saying like with the kids, like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna watch this together. Like like yeah. Dylan's dad did for him. You know, just saying, like, all right, look, this is an important story and that's a it's a powerful movie. Let's sit down and watch it together. But yeah, as far as like something on a on a Saturday night, <laughs> what do we what do we want to pop in there? Yeah, that's yeah. a it's a tough one. Yeah. It's like it's uh, finding the right mood. All right, moving on to number twos. My number two is pretty recent, actually. And I, oh. I walked out. And actually, there was, a, there was a lot of people. What? I said you Oppenheimer said, in a whisper oh. voice. No, I'll see that again. This okay. was one that I had a lot of people asking me about. Uh, probably because I'm a big Batman fan. That is because it's Joker. And this was one I walked out, and again, I, I remember walking out of the theaters and being like, okay, I don't ever want to see that again. And that's exactly what I told people when they were like, oh, did you see Joker? Oh, it, it should, you know, how is it? And I'm like, really well done, but I don't want to watch it again. The, you know, this this spiral of this guy that, you know, and it's it's not a Batman movie. It's not a superhero movie. It's it, it's like uh, a, a relative of that, but in this super sad, depressing movie that's wrapped around it. You know, and it's and it's kind of like, ah, yeah, I, I I don't want to rewatch those scenes yeah. of of him. You know, playing make believe with stuff and you know just like it's the things in his mind and the and the heartbreak yeah. you see him go through and i'm like i don't want to revisit this like ever so but you also walked out of that theater and said you know what what if it were a musical <laughs> what if well somebody said that and uh that person's probably fired <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was you know it was a it was a really well made movie. Yeah, I, it really kind of made me think as I as I was going through it and watching it, sitting there. But yeah, when I got out, I was like, "Once is more than enough for me." Which was your uh, road? Which was your well, like the the because he he lashes out and he's violent several times. Which was your like the least favorite? Where you're just like, "This is." too much I, mean, I don't know i i think back to like him going to the the girl after having all these like imaginary like girlfriend moments with her and then showing up and 
she's like, That's, what are you, what are you doing in my house? You know? Yeah. And I'm, like, and I'm like, Oh my God, I feel so bad for her. I feel so bad for him. And I'm like, I don't yeah. feel so bad for him because he's crazy, but it's, I don't know that it's his fault that he's crazy. And then he's showing up, you know, and talking to little Bruce Wayne. And that just made me like, Oh, I don't like this. So yeah, it's, it's just a lot of it, but like, especially that kind of end three quarters or so and third of the movie where, where things are really going down South. It's kind of like, uh, I don't want to watch that. Or him being made fun of like on the TV. Oh, there's, there's so much, so much. I don't ever want to read. So there's my number two. Good. It's good. Number two. My, it's my number two is gonna make you mad, bro. And I apologize in oh, advance no. for this, is it but it does Knight? represent a lot. No, I love the Dark Knight. I'm watching it right now on like a side monitor. Oh, yeah. um, the I this represents probably the biggest category of my three, uh, which is movies that are great. I acknowledge are great. There is no content specific reason to why I would not want to watch them again. You know they haven't aged poorly. They haven't. Uh, you know it's not too too gory or too too raw. It's just that they're really long. Is it Interstellar? And when I th- and when I think, no, I love Interstellar. I'm watching Interstellar on a second monitor. No, it is <laughs> the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, the whole trilogy? The whole trilogy? You're the putting whole the trilogy. whole trilogy in there? I'm putting, you can, if you insert which, whichever movie you want. No, I, wait, I'm not watching any of them. I, no. I'm not watching four hours of a movie anymore. I just can't do it. I can't do it. And it's not just the Lord of the Rings, and I know you're a big fan of the Lord of the Rings. But it's like, you know, I, like this, this, this last October, I'm sitting there trying, you know, I'm, I'm thinking through, you know, maybe some scary movies that I like to watch. I'm, and I, I kept like, you know, scrolling through streamers and, and there would si- Silence of the Lambs popping up. And I'm like, oh, Silence of the Lambs. Oh, oh boy, that's long. <laughs> oh, you know, and, and it's just like, this, it's long. It's like, it's like two and a half hours of like slow moving, like not, early 90s. Look, it didn't. Make, it's, it's not the cover for a reason. Is like I, I probably would watch that again at some point. Certainly before I would pop on the four-hour, like twelve to fifteen-hour commitment that is the Lord of the Rings trilogy. This is like, no, this was a me. Like so when funny. I was in my when I was when I was younger, when I was a young man. This is the kind of stuff that I lived for. Like long, give me like movies couldn't be long enough. I think I had this exact argument in reverse <laughs> as a young man, going like, "What? Like, what do you mean too long?" I'm like, "I'm sorry." Like, oh, oh, you know, it was a, it, this was this was really great. Uh, this, you know, this massage was lovely, but man, it was like 15 minutes too long of like delight <laughs> and wonderment. Like, no, no, no. Like, if it's good, then it, it can be as long as, as as you want it to. You know, if you're hungry, you, then you want to stay and enjoy every every last bit of your meal. And now I'm like, oh man. Uh, how how long is this massage taken? <laughs> like, like it feels it feels okay, but I got places to go. Uh, this, and just the the more time that passes, the less that like that that pull that desire to say okay. This it, it, again, it's a lot of war. It's a lot of like savagery. It's a lot of like slow moving speeches. There's a lot of giant plot holes. There's a lot of that particular face that Elijah Wood is making in the GIF. There's a lot of just like weird kind of like ambling story moments. A lot of things that I just like you know can forgive as a young man who's just hyped to, to see this on the screen for the first time, who's hyped to watch the DVDs, to, hyped to see the extended versions versus now where I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't, I just can't. My kids are like, dad, we want to watch Lord of the Rings. I'd be like, that's great. That is great. I'm going to go out and enjoy myself really? for like four hours. You guys can just <laughs> go ahead and watch these. I'll, maybe I'll pop in for a scene. I'll be like, pretty silly that they're not riding those birds, huh? That's great. I'm out of here. Uh, you know, it's just, it's long, man. It's long. It's long. And I'm not trying to insult anybody. If you're still in that phase of your life where you're like, yeah, I cannot get enough. I want to stay at the buffet. Give me all of the morsels. Great. Yes. Like, enjoy it. Happy life, man. But uh, for me, I, I can't do it. Even if your kids said they want to watch it, you'd be like, no. If my kids said, Dad, I would really like to watch this with you specifically and have 
a father-son moment that is built and bonded around watching this entire trilogy, then of course I would do it. I love my kids. I'd do anything for them, including <laughs> watching the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. But let me tell you what's never going to happen, because my kids are never going to want to watch four-hour movies. Uh, they are never going to come to me and say, Dad, we really want to sit down with you. They don't even want, they don't even like to watch the good movies that are short from like the time the time when I was younger, let alone the, the four-hour ones. They're like, oh, Dad, that first oh, Jurassic Park, man. there's a lot of talking in it. <laughs> it's a lot of talking but like, you think that's too much talking wait wait till the music starts playing and we start panning across flowers and we start hearing them talking about second breakfasts <laughs> you're gonna be out that's true Man. this does make i knew this sad. would make you mad i'm i'm no, so not, sorry no not even mad i'm just sad i'm like oh but this is this is a trilogy that just begs to be like marathoned too which... when, when was the last time you marathoned it the whole thing well, I mean, that's what you just said. It begs to be marathon. When was the last time you marathon? Good uh, point. Back to back to back. We're, I'm actually trying to plan one right now for Amy for her birthday. That was like two Whoa. months ago. But um, we've sat down over the past <laughs> year. I think we've watched at least two of them. In a row. Maybe not in a row. Maybe in like a week. <laughs> The, pr the problem with a movie like this too is if I put it on, it's not like I, this isn't like something that would make me angry if it was on in the background, right? Like there's nothing offensive about it, but I would be on my phone. I'd be on my iPad. I would be doing anything else to just like entertain myself. Like while this was in the background, you know what I mean? Like it's not something that I'll, and I, I'd look up occasionally and be like, Oh, Hey, look arrows. I wonder why Legolas <laughs> takes all that time to comb his hair so straight and back in that pony. That's it a tight pony. And then I, no, it just happens. And then back, 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 to, back to scrolling. Ah, that Gimli. What a character. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Um, that was solid from... from well, well, had some uh, adult coloring books. Work on my Gollum impression. You know, things like that. Mm. My precious. No, I can't I do it. Uh, my I precious. disagree. But that's okay. I, I still say the first one is the best. The first one, I, I, can, I'll, I can pop that one in and watch it. Absolutely. The first one just yeah, ends, like, mid-scene. It might, have been, it might as well have just been mid-sentence. Eh. No, it wasn't eh. mid-scene. They're walking, like, over It was, like, the mid-scene. They're, like, walking. They're, like, getting in the water, and then all of a sudden, it's like, it's over. It's no, they okay. walk up a it's mountain. It's fine, because then I think, do I really want to go and, and be there in the valley for, like, three, four hours, and then there's another, like, kid? I don't, I, I don't have to do all of that kind of stuff. Just make it nice and easy. And, and for all the people that I've angered, I just want to remind you that I am saying, unequivocally, these are great movies. They're yes. great. They're great. They're great. Also, great score. Great score. Yes. Great score. Great score. All right. Let's but end that again. on a high note. Tudong, what's your number two? My number two is, is one of the more recent ones, and that is The Revenant. I saw this in the theaters, mm -hmm. and it is a gorgeously shot movie. It is a fantastically written movie, and it is anguishly acted. Um, hey, Leo really earned his Oscar. A lot of people really don't. But hey... This guy really, I'm like, I was like, what does he have to do to get an Oscar? And so I saw this and I was like, yep, he, he, that, there it is. That's what he has to do. Very good movie. Not exactly true to the real life story, but we're not going to let a little thing like truth to interrupt a good story. Uh, it's a revenge story. I mean, all these different kinds of things happen and he just keeps on going. Have you guys seen this movie? I've never seen this. No. It is a not fantastically shot movie. The, some of the shots are just haunting and gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And the things that happen, I mean, Tom, hey, your boy Tom Hardy's in it, bro. Tom Hardy's in it. Uh, you know, it's, it's, he's, like the, yeah. he's like Brody's sixth favorite Tom. Sixth? Sixth? Link, links below <laughs> to our, <laughs> oh, our, our ranking Toms episode. <laughs> we did rank Toms. It's true. I, That's I don't true. remember That's where Tom true. Hardy ended up. I'm going to say he was too low. Top five, top five Tom, maybe. Top, top five, five Tom. I don't remember. He, he was above Tom Jane and Tom Skerritt. That's all I know. That's for sure. Better than that. Anyway, this was my, my pick. I don't think I can. I would watch this. It is sad and it is trying and it is gut-wrenching and it is satisfying in some ways. And, and it, it is, but I mean, it is an excellent piece of art. It is definitely something to see. I say definitely watch it. I don't, 
I'm trying to think if my daughter's seen this one yet. She's seen a lot of movies, and a lot, but I'm, I don't think she's seen this one yet. But hey, show the kids. Have some fun with nightmares, I guess. Either way, the point is, <laughs> excellent movie, excellently acted, and I am fine never seeing it ever again. This this poster makes it look like Jack from Titanic is back for revenge. <laughs> like he's, he's like climbed out of the icy water. Right. He's, the, the hair has grown. Yeah, yeah, his, yeah. His, his weathered face from like, now it's time for my revenge on that rose. I have aged like 30 years. <laughs> Which is just about how long it was. He was like frozen in a block of ice and then he, he thawed out and it's like right. time for revenge. It's happened before. Jack's back. Yeah. 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 Hey. All, uh, all ocean and no land make Jack a dull boy. Yeah. <laughs> hey. All right, what hey. you got for number one, bro? All right, number, yeah, one, number one. This one, this one was easily my number one. This is the one that I go to. I've probably even said this on the podcast, where especially when people would ask me about Joker, I say it's like this movie. It's it's a wonderful movie, well acted, well shot. But I don't ever, ever want to watch this movie again. And that's The Wrestler. Oh. So, yeah. so I, I this, this has like a, an extra special hit on me because I've been a pro wrestling fan for so many years that I've seen a lot of, you know, the old school wrestlers live this life. You know, you see them at, at conventions, you know, signing like... That's all they're looking to do is just kind of sign those old pictures, you know, and it's mm. you have Mickey Rourke's character like living in the uh, the trailer park and he's playing the old Nintendo games of him and trying to just trying to live that life. But but not he's beat up, you know, he's, he's, he's drinking and bodies falling apart. And it's just it's it's a movie that is. Who sad, you know, when I, when I went and saw, uh, the iron claw, that's another wrestling movie that came out last year, mm. you know, I was worried because the, that Von Eric family went through so much tragedy, but throughout that movie, they put in these really nice optimistic parts and there just really wasn't any of that in the wrestler it's just sad upon sad upon sad and it ends on a sad note and you walk out and you feel horrible and yeah and i felt especially horrible because i'm like i could probably name like a dozen wrestlers that are probably in that same state and, it, and it's super sad sad it's sad it's sad so this is one that I think he this won an Oscar or he won an Oscar. Something happened. He there was awards for this. I don't. Know. I don't think he won an Oscar. No. Uh, he may have been nominated, but I doubt he's been. I doubt he won. I'm on it. No, don't worry. You you, you uh, keep going, bro. You're doing great. Winner of best picture or something. I don't know. He this. I remember this going through a, some awards. Maybe it maybe it probably wasn't an Oscar, but it. There were awards for this, and I and I so it's it's really it's a good movie if it's hard to even recommend because it's so sad but yeah it's it, you know this was kind of mickey works like come back and then it, it, it kind of fell back down the chain but, but yeah this it was tough it was tough to watch it's just do you think you would have liked it better if uh, their original choice who was cast, which was uh, Nicolas Cage, was a uh, star of it instead of Mickey Rourke? Uh, maybe Nicolas Cage would have brought, like, would have lightened it up some. I mean, I, I don't know. You know, it's Nicolas Cage is, is quirky. You know, Mickey Rourke is just... He is quirky. He's, he's bad. It's just sad. It's just sad. Like, just he looks beat up. He looks like he went through... 20 years of getting beat up, you know? And so I don't know. I, I, I hadn't heard that Nicolas Cage was, was originally it. No. Maybe. Uh, they're, they're, uh, Mickey Rourke and Marissa Tomei were both nominated for Oscars, but neither one for this. Okay. So it was nominated. Okay. It was close. Um, but yeah. 
So this is this is a really sad move, really, especially if you're a wrestling fan. I don't ever want to watch. Do you think I that he dies I in the end, bro? I think it. Oh, spoilers. If, if yeah, spoilers. If 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 you spoilers. Know. How long ago did this come out? I don't know, like 2009. <laughs> no statue. There's no statute of limitations uh, on spoilers. You gotta. You gotta. I'm not saying you can't give spoilers. You just gotta say spoilers before you say it. I don't Boilers. remember if it explicitly shows him dying. It's like dying. bankruptcy. You just have to yell it out loud and then it counts. Yeah. I don't remember if it explicitly shows him dying or if it just alludes to him dying, but what? Yeah, it's 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 a sad ending. It's it's not a happy he ending. He goes and he's, he's going to do his final move. And even his partner was like, hey, man, you know, you don't have to go and do that. And he's like, get out of my way. And yeah, he it's jumps his head butt and off it the top goes rope. to white. Yeah. Yeah. And it, but it flashes to white. We don't see. Yeah, so we don't know if he dies or not. 2008, by the way, 2008. 2008, okay. So Many moons ago. All right, let's move on. I don't even want to look at the poster anymore. Well, uh, you, this is, that was a perfect choice, bro. Uh, and not, I, didn't choose that, I didn't choose that movie, but the category is spot on. Uh, my number one category for stuff that I don't really have an interest in rewatching is stuff that just is like gut wrenchingly sad, um, like the emotionally devastating, uh, and that can be you know from from your ranging from like your Marley and Me's with like you know that any really any dog movies where you just kind of like you're loving the dog and then at the end they inevitably just say and then the dog died or whatever and then it's just like you know Tears City. Um, but like to, to this one, which I, I saw in the theaters, I absolutely loved. You guys will recognize it when the title pops up. I don't think it's like a very particularly famous movie anymore. Um, oh, but man, but man, did I enjoy this one. Oh, gosh. Uh, and you know, it was, it, it was, it was like a really, you know, I, I don't even know how, how great it is anymore. Like I, I've, I've seen it a few times, uh, when it came out, it came out at a, you know, in 2001, uh, so many moons ago, I, I, I did not have a you know, a close relationship with my father and, you know, seeing this, I, you know, I've always kind of felt like a father for my younger sister. I saw this in the theater with her and afterwards I just kind of like hugged her and we, when we cried together, it was like this, like really, you know, this emotional like moment. Uh, I, surprisingly, not a lot of gifts uh, <laughs> for this movie. So we just went with, with tears. Speaking of Nicolas Cage up here, uh, and this is his audition for the wrestler uh, giving in James Vanderbeek with the worst crying face of all time. Um, this was a it's a beautiful movie. If you if you, if you don't know anything about it, uh, it's like a, a father who, uh, whose son is uh, like off the rails and drugs and prostitution. And, uh, wow. and you know, it's he's a strange Anakin and, uh, Hayden Christensen, pre Anakin Hayden Christensen. And, uh, you know, Kevin Klein uh, gets diagnosed with a uh, terminal cancer and he wants to, you know, there's this beautiful allegory of tearing down an old house to build a new house and. Uh, he wants to do this with his son, so you know this. Ed, Kristen Scott Thomas is fantastic, and the, the, the acting is fantastic. Um, I, my, I, I tell my wife about my list, and I was trying to explain this movie to her, and I started tearing up just talking about the movie. I'm doing better. I'm doing better now. I, I had to, it was my dress rehearsal I had to get it out. It's so sad. I try to imagine so like watching this now as like as like a dad and, and thinking about the legacies that I'm leaving my kids and and their lives, and you know like. Um, when we talk about death as a young person, it's like the tragedy of what you're missing out on. And then as you get older, it's like the, 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 the tragedy is what you're missing out on in the lives of, of like the people you love. Uh, you know, like I, I want to be there to see, you know, my kids grow up. Like there's like that, that, that pull and stuff. And I don't know, this is like a movie that would absolutely like devastate me now in a way that like, I'm just not, I, I, that's not like a, like two hours that I, like I want to spend. Uh, it was a beautiful movie. It's really good. There's a lot of movies that fit in this category that you might see. Um, uh, you know, I thought I thought about several others. One for this one, but this is this was like in my top five for a while back when we used to really religiously uh, update our top fives uh, in the in the in the early two thousands. Uh, but not not anymore. It's a beautiful movie. It's a great movie. Don't want to see it. <laughs> Tuck it away. I can barely watch Inside Out with the with the little girl crying right there. Right. Man, that's a that's a that's a tough watch too. <laughs> I'm a softie in my old age, man. I'm like, take get, get rid of these war movies. <laughs> I can't do these long movies. I can't do these sad movies. Just give me like, give me a nice, uh, give me a nice action. Where's, what's Tom Cruise doing? Yes. Give me, give me some, give me some Tommy. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, re I remember when, when everybody was complaining about Hayden Christensen acting, and I remember telling multiple people, "Oh, go watch Life as a House. Like he's really good in that." And I don't know if anybody ever went and watched it, but it, it, it's like, it's like, hey, go watch this, this ultra sad movie, and. and <laughs> 
I'm sorry if anybody went and watched this and was duped, you know, just to see. It's just a beautiful to see movie. Like, you know, like you know, especially, especially if you're <laughs> seeing it, see it once at least. You got to see it once. I, I wonder. I wonder how well it's held up. Uh, but I think I think probably fairly well. Kevin Klein is Kevin Klein is an is like one of the least talked about actors that's yeah. fantastic we don't talk about him enough nearly enough sure. he's just yeah. great um i really i really enjoy like most most of his movies uh are, are, mm-hmm. i find him to be especially exceptional and um so we should we should talk some more kevin klein uh, at another time H- uh, hayden christensen is good in this he is still a little whiny if you don't like whiny anakin <laughs> if you're kind of coming in with like this preconceived sure. idea of like whiny hate but it's not his fault i mean they, that's it's the character it's, it's, it's sure. written to be that way so but if you're kind of if you're seeing it in reverse order uh and you're like oh see look he's just whining again <laughs> at least in this one it, 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 like he's acting well and but it just happens to be how the character is supposed supposed to be portrayed if that makes sense uh versus maybe your feelings on the star wars saga <laughs> sure. all right all right dylan what's your number one man Wow. My I better number see one. a black and white poster. Come on. Go ahead, bro. Put it up there. My number one happens to be Eraserhead and his black and <laughs> white. <one> poster. <laughs> he got it. Yeah. He got it. It's really funny. This movie, I... <laughs> the first time and probably I think the only time I've actually watched it, and I don't think I've ever actually wanted to revisit it, uh, there's scenes in this that are <laughs> disturbingly nightmarish as far as I'm concerned, like disturbingly nightmarish. Like it, the, the, the di- when he goes to dinner at his girlfriend's house, to girlfriend's parents' house and the dad and the mom and all of that is just so completely nonsensical there are things that happen for absolutely no reason. Nobody discusses it, and maybe they even act like it's off. Maybe they don't. <laughs> I mean, like, there's a baby, but they're not sure if it's a baby. And the mother, when she's saying this, that you need to be responsible for that, for some reason, starts, like, like licking his neck, and he's just like, what the... And the mom, and then the daughter has to, like... She's like, Mom, get off of him. What are you doing? And the dad, he's like, I can't... Be- I can't even bend my knees. I've been working on these pipes for so long. Do you, do you like chicken? And stares at him just the whole time. I, would, I, 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 I don't know if I would even. And that's just the very, like the beginning. The lady in the radiator is also nightmarish as she steps on different versions of what I can only describe as giant tadpoles because I don't, <laughs> I don't want Bro to have to uh, bleep anything out. Just singing and 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 stepping on those poor things. And the poor little baby. OK, you know what? All right. I've admitted it earlier because I thought to myself, I, I was discussing this movie, as a matter of fact, with my wife. And I was like, all right, you know, it's true because she, she's like, not all babies are gorgeous or be, like beautiful. And then this and some, some of them just don't look good. And I'm like, <laughs> all of them, they just look cute and they look adorable. And I don't even care. They're, they're fantastic. It could be like a little baby lizard. And it, and they're like, this is my kid. And I'd be like, there's a little baby. I'm a sucker for all of that. So I don't care if the kid, however that kid was, I, I, I'm not going to spoil it or anything, even though this is what, 20, 30, 40 years old at this point. This is 77. This, yeah, this one's 77. Yeah, it's, 70. old. it's <laughs> as older than all of us. Just so. yell spoiler and, and then and then you can say whatever you want, man. Spoiler. One thing that <laughs> the one thing that I truly am like, the I, I'll be like, oh, let's go watch this nightmare again. But then I think about the end and how he like the baby ha- is like covered in gauze and then he snips the gauze and then apparently the baby dies because of that. I'm like, what? <laughs> no, 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 no good. I don't like that. Bad, bad, very bad. So, yeah, this nightmare right here, I have seen it once and I saw it with Charlie and we. <laughs> It was very late at night, and both of us fell asleep as we were watching it. And what the hell? Yeah, we fell asleep watching. <laughs> why did we? Why did we watch it so late? Ah, but I, it is I, a very, very well, well done movie. It is. There, genius. there is there are some things that um you know that we'll have to explain to our kids, and, and and probably not because it's not it wasn't culturally significant enough. But there are things that we went through that our kids will never have to do. One of those things was falling asleep, like watching a channel 
and then waking up yeah. and it's like some kind of like girls gone wild infomercial or some you know some like if you left it on a movie channel some like yeah. some awful movie like that if somebody walked in they'd be like what are you watching and it's like i, I don't know i just fell asleep and i was, I was watching <laughs> This was such a surreal experience to to be drowsy and to watch, and it was so weird, and it's and it's all like a nightmare, and then you kind of fall asleep, and your dreams are weird, and then you wake up, and you're like, oh no, man, my brain, okay, what is happening? Like, it's it, it, this was a this was an experience. Uh, oh boy, yeah, this is a weird when one. He, woke uh, up, he was having a nightmare. Yeah. He was having. I'm like, what is happening? What happened? That's his head. It, it fell off of his body, and now it's an eraser. <laughs> He's like an eraser head. He's yeah, this like was a eraser head. Hey, this one's on Max. If we want to watch it all together as a group, is it I don't have Max, oh, and I'm okay with it. <laughs> I, I, hey, you know what? I would watch this again. But I mean, no, 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 I won't. I won't. I don't like the fact that he cl- clips off that stuff. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't like it, and I don't like it. Especially even though that was it was your kid. content. We, we would all watch these for the content. That's true. That's for the people. If we had to do it for the people, we do it for the people. For the people. I'm not watching wrestler again. Sorry. For the people, bro. Razorhead? No, I'm not watching a wrestler again. If this video gets 10 likes, Brody will watch the wrestler again by himself with a camera trained on him, trained on his face. No, no, I'm not. We'll do it. Brody, if I can, if I can say GIF, you can watch the wrestler with a camera right on your face to get all of your tears. Totally different, man. It's totally different. Yeah, one's hard, what I did, and a real sacrifice, what I did. And one is you just sitting on a couch watching a movie with one shoulder. With one shoulder? <laughs> with one shoulder, bro. You can't do it any easier than that. Uh, it's, uh, it's not like, you, get, you know, you can't wrestle yourself anymore. That's true. Not anymore, bro. Not anymore. <laughs> the not career anymore. has been slightly interrupted just, just, for, to be just for a season. Used to be able. Those were the days. Brody, I still regret that we never went on a, a, one of those like wrestling reality shows to become wrestlers. Would have been great. That would have been great. In a different life. <laughs> a different life, for sure. All right. You guys now, can still do it. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> be like, be like the, I'd be, I would be like the ending scene from The Wrestler, but only on the very first move I ever tried. Like, are you sure you want to do this? I'm like, yeah, it's great. And then cut to white. And it's like, well, that was the last we ever saw Charlie. He tried to do a jump off the top turnbuckle, and that was it. Yeah. Well, let us know in the comments below what are some movies that you think are fantastic, but that you just, for whatever reason, don't want to watch again. Maybe some of our reasons resonate with you. Maybe you got your own reasons. Um, you know, but you know, and you can even just mention stuff you don't want to watch again. Like, I thought about putting Serenity on here because they kill, you know, spoiler. Now, yeah. I'm never watching that again. Uh, so, you know, you get angry in the comments, but not at us, but at, at the movies. Yeah, at the we movies. didn't make this stuff. We just brought it What's to you. It's true. And, and let us know in the comments if you want Brody to watch The Wrestler with a live feed, and we'll, we'll make that happen. Not happening. Sorry. And, I, <laughs> and if you guys want to do a full a full Lord of the Rings trilogy yeah. watch, I will do that live. But, but we got to get like 100 people with us. I'm into that. Oh, yeah. All Me right. Too. Well, we'll see you next time. Hit that like below that beautiful beard, and we'll see you next time.